<laughs> it's not afternoon yet, brother. I am almost there. <laughs> I am recording. Alrighty. Welcome to Making Fun, the podcast that is so bad it's good. Or as my or as Drew likes to say. It's good enough for who it's for. I'm Jeremy, he's Drew. This is what we do. Hey, that rhymed. That did rhyme. <laughs> How's it going, man? It's going. <laughs> hey. It's been a long two weeks. Hey, how's it going? It's going. Okay. Did I say that like three times already? That's two. Oh, well, hey, how's it going? It's going. <laughs> what's up? What's, uh, what's on the agenda for today? Um, today's topic is apps and what are they good for? If they're good for, or are they really good for anything? <laughs> Do apps help you or waste your time? That's, come on, I, I worked really hard on that. <laughs> but that's not what I sent you. I know, but I was trying to roll with it. Ab lib it. Yeah. Well, that count contradicts my notes. Well, I was, anyhow. <laughs> What you been up to? What you been doing? Uh, Making anything? Well, yes. I ripped out my kitchen cabinets and have been remodeling my kitchen. Oh, you bought some already? I bought some bottom cabinets, <clears throat> stained and polyurethane them, and they're currently in place. And uh, I'm getting ready to build my own countertops. From... Two by sixes. Are you going to have like a butcher block? Something like that. Um, I plan on uh, taking them, planing them down. A guy from works let me borrow his planer. Uh, planing them down, drilling them, put uh, doing pegs to help hold them together, gluing them, wood clamping them, and... Uh, then once I get everything together, I plan on burning them with a torch to give them that burnt look and then sanding them down lightly and epoxy them. Okay, so so it's going to look like a, a farm table. Yes, kind of. Well, why don't, why don't you rip them and turn them on the end grain and do that? Too much work? Too much work because this was a last minute thing. I was just going to buy, buy prefab countertops, but uh, I got into it with somebody and uh, they made me angry. So I come up with a new idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not going to ask. <laughs> I don't want to. Um, yeah, I got you. I got you. A commercial store and me are not getting along currently. I'll put it that way. Oh, I, I have no qualms about calling out commercial stores. Which one is it? It's one I like. It oh, no. Okay, we can't do that if it's one we like. Is it the one <laughs> I like? I don't know. It, it was really the, the person I dealt with. That was the, the biggest issue. Oh, okay. <clears throat> because the person boldface lied to me after they had talked to me on the phone not even 20 minutes before that. You just, you just can't get good service anymore. So mm. I returned I returned everything for the countertops and decided I was going to build my own. I like that. You know, I like that approach. It takes you 10 times as long and costs you twice as much. But you just can't put value on, you know, the pride in your own hard work. Well, that's very true. But it's actually going to be cheaper in the long run because of what they were going to charge me. Yeah. Hmm. Anyhow, I, I'm just I'm just having trouble visualizing the uh, two by six. I, I'm I'm not doubting you, okay? Because I I know nothing about building cabinets or countertops. I actually I looked up um, a guy I work with <clears throat> had done two by fours with his, and uh, he's like. 
I don't know if it was, he goes, I didn't know if it would do good with two by sixes, but I thought about doing it. We talked about it and, uh, he, his turned out very nice. Um, it is a more of a country look to it. Yeah. But I think they turned out very, very, very nice. So I started looking around on internet, YouTube, uh, lots of videos I've watched over the last week of how to build countertops from two by fours and two by sixes. Now, I wish I had a planer that was wide enough to do the whole thing when I got done, but what can you do? So you're going to join them on your table saw and plane them with your friend's planer? Yes. Because I know you don't have a joiner. No. It, it's doable. So are, are you going to like... Are you going to beat it up before you polyurethane it and everything and give it a good texture? Or are you just burning it so that it's all good and flat? The, I'll come to that when I get to it. Did you see... Uh, I think room for artistic flow in it. Okay. <laughs> Did you see uh, my palette bar I finished? Yes. I fin I, the finish on that is that iron acetate. Okay. That just vinegar and steel wool. And I throw all my rusty nails in it because I try to use up everything, you know. And I just let that permeate in a big jar. Permeate. It's probably not the right word. I like to make up words and meanings. Uh, permeate would be something soaking in. Yeah. Too. Yeah, well, I guess it's soaking in. Because I've left it there forever. You're you're really thinking about something that's oxidizing. Yeah, there you go. We'll go with that. I don't care as long as you get the message. That oxidizes the metal and gets the rust. But uh, I, I promised this bar to someone for their wedding. It's, they're going to be their wedding gift. And I told them I was going to finish it. So me and Stacy went out and uh, sanded it down and... It, it needed some restructuring because I just built it for that video. It wasn't really structurally structurally sound in a lot of aspects. So I went, I took part of it apart and uh, put some wood screws and stuff in it, hold it a little tighter. And then we finished it with that. And then I covered it with wipe on poly. So I'm probably going to have to cover it again. I'm not sure exactly their use. She told me that they might want to use it for outdoor use. So that's not going to be a good finish for that. I need to find out for sure. But I, I was just going to say that can save you a little money if you do that instead of buying a lot of stain. But you're probably going to want to stain it the same as your cabinets, right? No, I've, I'm really looking at just a flat burn finish. Oh, that's right. Duh. With epoxy. Never mind. Where are you going with this? I'm trying to save you money, brother. Well, um. But I guess you got it figured out. If you're gonna burn it, that's just as good. Because uh, you know, to burn it, I already have the torch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was gonna epoxy it anyway. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> is, what, what else have you been up to? Is that it? Um, I had to do a full rewire of the kitchen. Um, I ripped out all the backsplash air hammer. If you have a backsplash that you have to remove, if you plan on not removing the drywall with it it's not an easy it makes life easier in the aspect but I used an air hammer to remove the god ugly 1970s looking tile it was new tile but it looked like 1970s hey don't be knocking on the 70s okay I, I was born in the 70s yes but their colors were so bland <laughs> gaudy is more like it I think I would agree with Gotti. Maybe this was 1960s retro, but anyhow, it looked like four shades of 
yellow and brown that were all mixed together. Yeah, very very earthy tones, huh? Not good earthy. <laughs> oh, uh, no. So I do, I, do you own an air hammer? Yes. I, I want one, but I need a compressor that will run it. I bought a three inch chisel. It was like twelve bucks. Yeah. Made very quick work of it. I think it took me a total of maybe two hours to remove the entire backsplash and everything that I needed out of my way. And saved most of your drywall? Most of it. Wow. What are you putting up? Are you putting up more tile? No. Um, Desiree and I talked about it. And we talked about it today. And It's okay if you can't remember. Happens I'm trying but it's not to that's all right I said it before you asked. <laughs> basically we're gonna put up a it's a type of paneling to cover everything you know something I've seen that I like hold on <laughs> <coughs> sorry um, that steel uh, ceiling panels Yes, I know what you're talking about. I, I think those look pretty good as backsplashes. But the aluminum ones would be better for a backsplash. Yeah, they make those. Yeah. They look like that. They're uh, 10 and they're 2 foot by 2 foot. That you can just buy. They're not really expensive. No. They're like, I think, $6 a piece. But paneling's good too. Whatever you like, man. Don't listen to me. If I'm I so never, far off track with your uh, uh, kitchen counter, redo. <laughs> I had to move. I've had to move gas lines. I've had to move uh, water lines. I've had to rewire the entire kitchen. Take out all the cabinet trees. Rip up part of the floor. I have the lower cabinets mounted in place and all of the electric wiring ran sounds fun you doing any video of this no i haven't had because i'm on a time crunch with the baby coming i have not tried anything i should but i haven't okay well i just thought i'd ask uh i did get myself stuck under the floor is that, is that going to uh, teach you any life lessons about donuts? No, it wasn't my fat that got me stuck <laughs> on the floor this time. Uh, <laughs> here's one for you. I got my finger stuck in a hole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the under, under the floor, right? I was under the floor. I was currently under the floor. I was running gas line, and I had a piece of pipe stuck in the hole so I knew where it was. And uh, I tried to push it up through the floor. Instead of using the screwdriver in my hand, I decided to use my finger. Yeah. Yep. I drilled an extra hole to get the pipe off my finger because it was going to be two hours that I would be stuck under there, and I didn't have a phone to call nobody for help. <laughs> You, you know, that's, that's one of my biggest fears is something happening to me while I'm working on something and nobody's around because I, I work by myself most of the time. And like if I cut myself on the table saw or if I fall off a ladder or something, you know, nobody's going to be around to help me. Two days later, Desiree tells me a story about of a guy that accidentally shot himself in the heart with a nail gun. Well, I've never heard that one before. <laughs> and drove himself 12 miles to the hospital. I, I've heard stories like that all my life. The guy cut his leg off with a chainsaw and drove himself to the hospital. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. But that was, that, that, I heard that story before cell phones were around. Well, I had, I can say when I did crush my hand, if I could have gotten myself out, I guarantee you that I would have walked into the supervisor's office and been like, I need to go to the hospital. Right. I, I was 
because of the adrenaline adrenaline rush and the shock, I probably could have drove myself to the hospital. Now, oh, it yeah. would have local hospital, not the one that I really needed to go to. Right. That, you know, special does, or special. Spe- Easy for you yeah. to say. Right. <laughs> Anyhow, off track, off, off track, off subject. Um, what have you been into? I've been busy this two weeks. I'm actually anxious to talk to you this week. I've done so much. Well, let's hear it. Let's see. I've been cleaning and organizing the shop for better efficiency, which means I've had to throw a lot of stuff away. But I'm. Uh-oh. I'm coming to the realization that I just cannot work with all the junk that I've collected. And, you know, some of it's got to go. I can't save everything. You know, other people got to help save the environment. Environment it can't just be me, you know. So, been doing that. Using a lot of the overhead space to hang the stuff that I absolutely have to hold on to, you know. Uh-huh. Let's see... I've relocated most of the tools that I use under my uh, outfeed slash build table. Yeah. Like I got the drill bits I use the most and all my drills and all that good stuff. I made that. You said the drill bits that you use the most. So that means all the ones that you're going to need probably in the next projects you make or somewhere else well no i've got a set that i've had on the wall behind me but i'm taking most of that stuff off the wall and i'm putting it on the workbench itself underneath i, I put a panel up and i'm so put i'm putting all that huh access. less movement easier access yeah because i keep twisting around to grab stuff and that way i don't have to twist around it's there i can reach down and grab it and i have a a quick chuck set of uh drill bits that i use a lot yeah and uh i put those there speed square ruler my sharpies uh what else i can't think of but you know basically just everything that i use the most i got two hammers over there i need to put a utility knife and i got a junk chisel that i need to put over there my beater chisel Speaking of what? Speaking of Sharpies, Desiree, this was something I was going to mention and I forgot. Desiree had, um, we picked up some cheap permanent markers for me uh, to do this project with in the kitchen. And to make everything match, the old cabinets that were there, the one like where the time capsule was under, or was on, we actually cut out... I cut out the um, laminate that people had put down on top of the floor year after year. I used Sharpies and marked the floor and used my circular saw to cut the laminate out in places and cut down all the way to the floor. And it worked out a hundred times better than I thought it was going to. Because you used a Sharpie? Well, easy, perfect markings. Easy to run along, exact width of my blade, so I knew exactly what I was cutting, and it worked out great. Oh yeah, I, I that's about the that's what I use the most in the shop to mark things is a sharpie, unless it's something that's going to have a finish on it later on that's just getting a cut, and then I'll use carpenter's pencil or something like that. But for the most part, I use a sharpie for the rough cuts and everything like that because my eyes aren't. As good as they used to be. Yeah. I can, I, I, I completely have to agree with that. That was awesome. I guess getting older, I need a a wider line to go by. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just make sure you know which side of the line that you need to cut on or if you're cutting the line itself. Because I make that mistake all the time. I don't take in the consideration of the curve of my blade. Well, when you're doing flooring, you're supposed to give yourself a little bit of leeway. So I figured, I figured I put the cabinets in place and then marked around the cabinets and then cut out the line itself 
So then that way it would be exactly where I wanted it to be. Yeah. And give that little bit of edge to work with. And other than that, I made an an outhouse TP dispenser, toilet paper. That's butt oh. that's butt wipe for those of you in the industry. They, the white, you know, I used to haul toilet paper when I drove a truck. The what? I used to haul toilet paper when I drove a truck. Oh yeah. So uh, when I said I was on a TP run, it was serious business. <laughs> <laughs> I actually uh, put up my pipe planter dispenser video last night. Oh, finally? Yeah, it was like 3 o'clock this morning. I finally finished it because I had shot the final footage yesterday afternoon because I wanted to wait for the kale to grow some, and I shot that yesterday. And I had a, some other stuff that I had to do. I actually had to do real work, you know, not just make-believe YouTube land. <laughs> and... Uh, I couldn't go to sleep last night, so I finished that up and posted it. I'm glad to get that out of the way. Well, between working seven days a week and working on the kitchen, I haven't had much chance to do a whole lot. That's been one big push of why I've uh, tried to just push through and get as much done with the kitchen as I can. Uh, I wanted to throw back to what something that you said earlier in your conversation. You said time capsule. Our listeners don't know that you found a, a time capsule on your wall, so to speak. Well, it wasn't in the wall. It was actually underneath of the cabinet itself. Oh, and like all that stuff fell out of a drawer underneath of it or something? Well, I'm guessing it was hard, but there were coupons from the 1970s, a bill, a gas bill from 1980, um, a picture of a child with a 1940s refrigerator behind him. And it's just, it was a lot of interesting stuff. Um, there was a couple things that were newer, like uh, there was a Kool-Aid packet. Um, but a lot of it, you know, five cents off coupons, not, you know, 75 cents dollar off coupons. Yeah. Five I, cents off coupons. I've I seen that Tony the Tiger seven cent coupon is like well that ain't going to get you very far <laughs> not anymore but back then it was a different world you could buy a car for you know three thousand dollars yeah it's crazy isn't it a nice car for three thousand dollars yeah then. so i thought that was pretty good i just i just wanted to let everybody know you said time capsule i didn't want to leave them in the dark oh well, that's fine i'm glad you did it, it, it was it was interesting. We both, or my wife and I both had a um, great time looking through the stuff and uh, seeing a glimpse into the past. You got anything for what's it good for? Two by sixes. <laughs> Two by sixes can make countertops. Okay. <laughs> It'd be cool if you were repurposing some. I It would be, but... Uh, time constraint here oh i understand um, i'm i'm thinking you know eventually if i if i you know one of these days i'm going to have to go to the lumber store and buy lumber because there's some things that i want to make that i just cannot find the lumber for you know in the dumpster if i want to if i scoured craigslist and drove 50 miles i probably could but that is just as wasteful as just going down the road to the lumber store and buying the lumber. You know what I mean? Well, look at it this way. My countertop is an L-shaped, okay? <clears throat> yeah. The left-hand side, the L part of it, is four foot long, okay? And the right side of it, the long piece where the, the, the sink is and everything, is ten foot nine inches. On the far side of my stove, I am actually going to have a two-foot countertop on the other side of my stove, too. So, for all the two-by-sixes that I needed, I think I paid, like, 60 bucks for everything. So, right. 
Well, I'm not disputing the price. the The price is is right. Here comes Bob Barker, but uh, you know my my whole thing is I try to make everything that I do upcycled. You know, I'm even doing that with my artwork now. Right. And that that's where I get it. But there's sometimes it, it's not going to be uh, it's not going to save anybody or anything. I'm not saving anybody. It's just as bad for the environment for me to be driving around across the country to get the stuff as it is for me to go to the home store sometimes. So, you know, you, you can't be all or nothing. Sometimes you have to mix in different aspects to, uh, to, to conserve is what because I'm saying. Black and white. There's some gray in there too. Right. Exactly. And I don't think that anybody disputes that. It's just that me personally, I try to make that decision to use everything upcycled that I can. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. I mean, I do try to upcycle when I get a chance to, but with all my projects, has my whole project has been this house and remodeling this house and getting it ready for <clears throat> right. Ezra and, and the baby on the way. So um, it's, I haven't had the luxury of doing that. I've had to push forward with, you know, I've got to, do this so i have to go buy this right it fits your lifestyle you you have less time than i have and i have more time than you just less uh money for materials so but i have less time because of seven days a week right to it you know oh god i hate seven days a week <laughs> they've been that way ever since uh eternity man seven days have always been in a week yeah, but seven days of work week gets to you sometimes. <laughs> well, don't. Don't do that. <laughs> well, I got one. This is kind of a cheesy one, but it's something that kind of goes into that reusing everything. Uh, when I was organizing the shop, a lot of times I don't have special built hangers for a lot of things. I, a lot of times I just put screws in the wall and hang something on it. I do have some special built hangers for like my hammers and chisels and screwdrivers and stuff like that. But, uh, I, I hung a, an extension cord on this two inch decking screw on the wall. And, you know, that kind of concerns me that I'm going to keep tearing up the sheathing by throwing that extension cord on that Nate or that screw. So yeah. I had a dried out Sharpie and I just lobbed the end off of that and pulled the guts out and I slid that, sharpie over top that screw and it protects my extension cord and i'm reusing that sharpie that's a cool one i like that so and, and uh, being an artist i have a lot of empty pens and just i got a lot of empty sharpies from out in the shop but i just try not to throw it away and uh that's a use i found for them so pen and markers as screw and nail covers that's a good one i like that thank mm. you thank you very much mm. <laughs> i have ideas <laughs> well share with me i am i'm just like you i'm horrible about i need to hang something here screw hang it yep so uh, i've got several things in the shop that would benefit from covers over them so they don't mess up some of the things that's old like my welding helmets both of my welding helmets are you know their hangers are screws and uh they've got the the padding on the back side of them oh the back yeah so to keep from tearing that up that would that would help out tremendously my welding helmet slash face mask uh doesn't have any padding on it i have to wear a, a cap <laughs> well I came across a really good deal on my 3M welding helmet. Someone needed money, and they told me they'd sell me a $300 helmet for 60 bucks. That's that's the best kind of deal, in my opinion. You know I don't buy anything new. So I can't really complain about that. And the other one was a $120 helmet that was on sale for 50% off. And then... Why do you need two? Oh, because well, you, you had that one already. I had I had one I bought the first one 
which was I bought it new when I bought my when I got my welder and then I bought the other one because it was just a really good deal I couldn't pass up on a really nice helmet which is actually come in handy for some people wanting um, wanting tips about some of the welding and I could actually physically show them because it, you can't show somebody welding right without two helmets you can't here show look at this <laughs> Yeah. You're blind. <laughs> so it was really nice to, and then I got to show them, you know, this is what you need to do. Or as I'm watching them do it, you know, slow down, speed up, you know, take your time, be easy with it. So it worked out great in the long run. That's a good point. If, if you got somebody that you need to show something to, or, you know, sometimes you might need help. You might might not have enough uh, brackets and clamps to hold down everything. Here, hold this. Make sure you're wearing wearing gloves. Yeah, and that beats the heck out of uh, closing your eyes while somebody's working. Nobody enjoys that. That's like the trust fall. Oh yeah, trust fall with welding. It's something that happens all the time. <laughs> it is. I and it's something I never really thought about. That's why we have these conversations. You, oh, I am going to repurpose something else. What? For what? Or I forgot. My old kitchen cabinet is going to become my new workbench in the garage. Yes. So it's it's a sturdy. It was a built for the place cabinet. You know the way they did the old style and. I'm going to repurpose it out in the garage as my new workbench. That's awesome. You gonna you gonna make a two by four top for or a two by six top for it too? Well, currently I plan on using the old countertop. Well, that'll work too. Um, I don't know how well that's gonna work because it's just a laminate countertop. So let I'll see how uh, well it holds up and if it holds up well. Good. If not, two by six it is. <laughs> what are you watching? Nothing. I really haven't kept track of the people I'm watching because it's been all about building countertops. I got you. I haven't necessarily been watching it, but I have been listening to the Maker's Hustle podcast, and I think that's my favorite podcast right now not really? not yeah not to uh I, I think they're more my kind of people not not that the all the other ones aren't my kind of people too it's just i i don't know i feel a little more kinship with those guys but i still like uh reclaimed audio and making it and all those guys the, i don't have enough time to listen to everything that i like i don't have any time to listen to anything lately <laughs> And I know I watched something else, but I cannot, I didn't write it down. It's, we only had two weeks. We were late for the last one, and it, but it just seems like it's been a month since I talked to you last. It, it has not seemed like a month. It seems like literally we recorded yesterday for me. Oh, does it? Well, okay. I, that just, I guess that's just a testament to how busy I've been because it's been such nice weather. I've been out in the shop getting stuff done and I've been doing a lot of oh. art. So, you know, I've been busy. For you, you've been busy, but I've been work, work at home, work, work at home, work, work at home. I have not had a break since we last talked. That sounds like a hip hop song. <clears throat> work, work at home, work, work, work at home. <laughs> <laughs> All it's right. Our song. <laughs> Do what? I said it's our new intro song. I had to get a recording of you doing that. We'll put a little, some of that beatbox on top of it. I'm, let yeah. me, I'm trying to rack my brain because I know I, I've really been introduced to so much this past two weeks. Uh, and I haven't written it down because I've been busy, but there's just so much out there. It's so wonderful that there are so many people doing things at home, you know, that, that it just tickles me. The, the world is an amazing place. I think that should be your tagline. What? I didn't write it down. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's good enough for who it's for. It's good enough for who it's for. Oh, I know something else that I've done. I've created a logo for myself. Oh. Yeah, I, um, I'm not ready to share it yet. I'm still looking at it and turning it around. And I, I got asked by someone else to do a logo too. And I returned their call. I, I did some drawings, but I'm not sure exactly what they want. I didn't get to talk to them in person. So that's kind of on hold until I talk to them again. Huh. But anyway, on to our topic. Unless there's something else you need to talk about. Um, no, not that I know of. Do apps help you or waste your time, Drew? It depends on the apps. That That's so subjective. That's a cop-out. I'm, well, I'm just kidding. This is this is where I've I've ran into the problem. I love my smartphone. There are some times that it has just got me out of a bind so quickly that I feel like it's completely useful. There are other times where I have been on Facebook for two hours and realized I was not even going to get on Facebook. Right. Facebook is the worst about that. What is it? Is it the scrollability? It's the scrollability, the playability, and it literally sucks you in. Yeah, the, somebody is going to say something inflammatory, and you, well, and then you're going to want to read the comments, even though you know that you don't want to be a part of that conversation, and you're going to read through it, and it's going to get you all bent out of shape, and then you go looking for videos of cute puppies or kittens or pigs or something like that. And the next thing you know, you've sat there for four hours. All the worst one that gets me is, is that when somebody shares a video of something absolutely just stupid, like <laughs> getting kicked in the balls. <laughs> and then, and then and you got to share it with everybody else. And then 30 videos later, you realize... Why am I watching a cat lick its own ball for 10 minutes? <laughs> That's a good question. Why are you watching that? Because it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I should have been asleep at 8. Because <laughs> I got on Facebook when I was trying to set my alarm. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, that is the worst. I, it does me the same way. And for a long time, I wasn't even getting on Facebook. But now, on the completely other end of the spectrum, I have apps on my phone for work, for, you know, faults for processors and faults for um, drives. And instead of me having to carry around 10 books to find out what each fault is because there's too many drives to try to remember that I can have all of that access on one app that's a free app on my phone that I can directly access and within second have information that I need. Absolutely. There's there's my problem. I I love my my smartphone because and the, I love my apps because I have both of those. It's it's I absolutely love what it's done to help me out, especially in my job when, when I have something I need to know the information because production's down and I have to get them back up and going. So I can access it very quickly, do my job efficiently, and go about my business. There's also like my wife and I use an app and it's a grocery app. And we're both connected to the same list, so it updates for us. So if I put something on the list, and she just so happens to go to the store, she didn't know that we needed that, but it's on her list, and we both always have the list because we always have our phones. I, I need that app. What's that called? Um, My List. My List? I think. You think that's available for iPhone? I think think i don't remember it's been a while since i got that but they make there's several of them that do the exact same thing the reason i picked that one was just because it was the first one i come across that worked for both of us yeah i do that sometimes too 
and that's why I've used it now for, we've used it now at least two years. Because, true story, I went to the store uh, one week and got everything that we needed. And then my wife come in right after me, and she got everything that we needed, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were both on the ball that day, but we just didn't communicate that we were both going to the store. And you were both trying to surprise the other. Well, I wasn't trying to surprise her. I was just trying to make sure that we have everything that we need, you know, because actually that's my job. But she helps me out a lot, you know. Well, that's very nice. Of yeah, I mean, we work together. It's not... To say that I'm a stay-at-home dad and I take care of the house, that's not a true statement because we work together. You know, I, I do all this creative stuff and I sell online and make money and she goes to work and I try to take care of the house while she's gone, but she does just as much housework as I do too. So, you know, we work together. But yeah, that app would help us out a lot. Do you have any other recommendations? I mean, I'll, I'll, let me get back. I agree 100% with what you said about there's good and bad. Do you think that it levels out? I mean, obviously, we're none of us are impaired by... No. Because of the technology, we have more time. That's what I'm saying. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. You because don't? Because there are more apps out there to hinder you than there are apps. I mean, look at it. Look at the industry that they have now for games on apps. You have Final Fantasy, a game that has been around since the regular Nintendo. Their next game, instead of being put out on a console, has been put out on phones. Well, I'm, I'm an anomaly because I don't play games. I mean... Yeah, for the most part, I don't play games. Every now and then, I might pick one up, but very rarely do I. The, the last one that I played was the one that I was playing with you. That was the uh, Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast. That's the only game I've played in probably 10 years. Except Uno. I don't play that on my phone. I know. I'm... <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to talk about the tech. Don't try to distract me, man. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, this is the technology age. We are in it, hips deep. If, yes. I, if I want to communicate with somebody, I don't do like I did in the 70s or 80s. I don't get in a car and drive to their house and talk to them. Or, you know, I don't call them on the landline. The, the communication is instant now, and that saves you tons and tons of time. We don't realize how much time our apps are saving us. And we have we have that leisure time left now because technology saves us so much. That's what I'm saying. I'm not some people can't <laughs> prioritize their life to begin with. That's not the app's fault, but there is more temptation, right? Yes, there's definitely more temptation. I guess it's all subjective. Well, there's there's also some apps that I've I've used a lot lately that it's not really a, a hindrance, but like Marco Polo. You still have it or not? Yeah, I still have it, and I really enjoyed using that. I, I think that's a good communication tool. I like that I can do a quick video and show anybody that I want to talk to what I'm doing. It's very simple, very easy to use, and it is, hey, look at this, and they're easy. They can easily respond back. Right. Between my wife and I, that works out great. Between people I work with, that wa that works out great. You, family members that are long distance, I can instantly show you what I'm doing. Make you a part of my life. Yeah, we do that with uh, my daughter out in Oklahoma. That, well, my wife talks to her mostly, but you know we get to see the pictures of the grandbaby and everything like that all the time on the video. 
that's that's nice. I I do get to see pictures of the baby because of Marco Polo too. Yeah. So that makes that so, makes things. So that cool. that's a huge uh, time saver. I, I don't have to travel to see my my grandkid. I mean, I want to. <laughs> I even got to see him in person yet because she lives so far away. It but, doesn't it doesn't make up for the actual. But see, that's also another point of it. Some people have gotten complacent with being able to see someone through technology and not making the effort to actually spend time with them. So you do have a loss of some connection. Yeah, I'm one of those people that's prone to uh, communicate behind the wall here. Uh, but at the same time, I really enjoy spending time with my people in person. Well, look at it this way. When you and I lived right down the road from each other, it was, I just went to your house. Yeah. But I was there all the time. Right. Okay. Sometimes you couldn't, we couldn't get you to leave. Good grief. And <laughs> some of the most memorable times of my life is when we lived there. Right. I agree. So, so, now it's we live so far apart it's hard for us to spend time together every time we get a chance we do but do you think that if you lived right down the road that i would be there all the time yeah i know i would i would right. pop in and bug you all the time but instead the way i used to as i'd just show up i could text or i could marco polo say hey what are you doing and come over. Now, do you feel like it would be the same type of situation now as it was then? Yeah, I, I think so. But that's just me. There's some people that I don't want to see in person, but I need to communicate with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yes. So, so in that way, it saves me time because, you know, some people just want to run off at the mouth, and I don't have patience for that. You know, my ADD kicks in, and I'm like, okay, see you later. Got to go do stuff. <laughs> I, like that. I like that analogy of it. Uh, and honestly, I do that. It's terrible that I do that. I, I can't, sometimes I can't think. It's just like on and off with a conversation. And I can con continue a conversation easier with the technology that we have to communicate with than I can in a real life conversation. And if I don't know the person real well, I'm going to stutter for a half an hour trying to get out what I want to talk about. So you can get to the source material of the conversation without having to go through the niceties. Well, yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm pretty cordial to everyone that I meet, but I can edit a conversation. That's true. I can't edit it when I'm talking to someone. But that's, that's two different things, too. Talking to someone in person and talking to people online are two different ways, and we have to recognize that. But getting back to the point, it does save me time because I can get to the point while I'm doing something else. And some people claim, or I think there's a scientific study that says that you don't get as much done multitasking as you think that you do. But that doesn't matter to me. If I feel like I'm getting multiple stuff done, that's okay. I think that you don't get as much stuff done. It depends on the situation there. Yes, if every second it's spent doing multiple things, but if I know that tomorrow it's going to rain and I need to go to Home Depot tomorrow because I can't work outside on my shed. Is that the place that you had trouble with? No. <laughs> All right, there's one down. <laughs> anyway. Okay, it was, but I'm I'm not going to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> the truth comes out. <laughs> so, anyhow, if I know that I'm going, but I have other projects that I know that I need to do and I need to buy parts for, I will get everything to the point of which I need the parts from Home Depot 
So I will do three projects, get them ready for everything that I have to go buy, go buy the stuff, then come back and finish all three projects. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because... That way, I've only made one trip to Home Depot. What does that have to do with apps? You were talking about multitasking. Well, I'm, I meant that in a technological sense by using apps. Oh. Well, I just bursted your bubble. Well, at least it wasn't about the countertops. You, you should go to the Menards. You have a Menards close to you now, right? Yes, I like Menards. I do, too. Uh, and Menards has an app. I use their their app all the time to check their prices and stuff. But it doesn't matter because I don't shop anywhere else. Mostly, I'm not. Sa- I'm not saying that I'm exclusive, but I use their huh. Menards, Home Depot, and Lowe's all three have apps. Oh, do they? Well, I only have the Menards app because that's where I go mostly. And I will cross reference all three of them, but I have all three within the same distance. I, I think that that's true in my situation, too. So, I will, and I do know different things that are carried at different places. So, like, Lowe's carries some things that Home Depot and Menards doesn't. Right. Menards carries all kinds of stuff that Home Depot and Lowe's doesn't. Right. So, you know, it just depends on what I'm going after as to where I'm going. Or, or, like, my cabinets. I was going to buy them from Home Depot, but I started price checking, and Lowe's had them for, I think it was like $90 cheaper for the exact same cabinets I was buying. So I went on and went to Lowe's and bought them because, and I just used the apps to double check. So that I, saved you time. And money. Yes. Well, I interviewed some people here at the house. And let's see. My wife told me she only downloads apps that are helpful. And that is a total lie. (laughs) Maybe it helps her high score. I was going to say. Games can be considered helpful because they are entertainment to you when you're stressed out. Yeah. That's true. And my son said they're more wasteful than helpful. But he's a gamer, and he beats himself up sometimes about how much time he spends gaming. And he lo- he watches a lot of gaming videos and stuff like that. Yes. And I asked my daughter, and she said they helped me pass the time <laughs> well when you're talking to a teenager don't they just want to be an adult anyway yeah that <laughs> they're bored there's too much time in the world oh i found that app it's grocery shopping list ease w- grocery shopping what list ease list ease List as in grocery shopping list and then ease, E-A-S-E. Gotcha. You know, uh, one useful app that I have is Guitar Tuna. I still use it. Yeah. I mean, because I'm a terrible guitarist, honestly, but I love it. And I I never learned how to uh, tune a guitar by ear. And I've always got my phone with me, and it tunes my guitar good. I, I've heard people complain about app tuners, but I've never had a problem with it. But maybe I'm tone deaf or something. That's good enough for who it's for. <laughs> it, it is. Um, of course, like calculator, calendar, I use those apps. They help me out tremendously. Well, that, uh, yeah, yeah. Conversion apps, I well, use a lot version apps when i had all six kids at home you know i have to had to use my calendar all every day because there was a doctor's appointment or an event or a sport event or something 
I mean, I still use that, but it's lessened a whole lot since there's only two kids left at home now. Right. Well, that makes sense, though. And I use my calculator every day. So that saves me time. Because you're not going to lose your phone. You're not. But if you had to have a calculator, you'd have to go looking for it. But you usually got your phone by your side. That's one way apps save your time. Is Our phones have become such a necessary part of our lives. Oh, it makes me angry sometimes, though. Yeah, sometimes I just want to set it down. But then you get 100 feet out the door and anxiety sets in. It's like, what if somebody calls? What if there's an emergency? You know, things you didn't think about in the 70s or 80s. Well, I, I will say there are times that I will leave my phone at home. But I will leave my phone at home knowing that my wife has hers. Yep, that's exactly what I do, too. I mean, see, it's always there. The tether is always there. So, and, it, and it's reading what you're doing, too. And people get mad at me and be like, oh, why didn't you text back or why didn't you call back? And I'm like, sorry, I didn't have my phone on me. But most people contact me through my wife anyway. <laughs> me, too. Or my wife contacts people for me. She does that too. Yep. Like yes. She Contact. contacted me yesterday. Just show yep. me a picture of you drinking a, a beer as big as your head. It was worth it though. Was it? Yes, it was. It looked delicious. It was, it was very delicious. I was thirsty. I was very thirsty. <laughs> and then I said, do you want to do a podcast today? And you're like, nope. Ready for bed. <laughs> Very relaxing. Uh, are there any good beer apps? I'm sure there are. I'm sure there is too. There's an app for everything. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. That might be have something I do. I don't know what it would be useful for, other than make you want beer if you're a connoisseur of beer. I am a connoisseur of beer. You got any more apps? It's kind of, I was kind of scrolling through the phone trying to figure out. I oh. did, when I got my new phone, got rid of a lot of apps that were useless junk. Well, here, what, here's something that we haven't talked about. Uh... And it's, it's like the biggest part of everything that we do with our phone is, is the camera. Oh, yeah. How handy is that? How I, I can't think of one time that I've worked on a car lately that I haven't photographed something to use as a reference later on. Oh, reference, taking something apart, putting it back together. Here's one for you. Every time I need a part for work, I will take a picture of it. And go to the parts room and be like, I need this. Right. So that way, and if I need to look up the numbers or anything, I already have everything right there. Instantaneous notes of everything I need. And I can reference what they give me to what I need. Or what I, what I have on my phone. Exactly. I don't use the video on my camera very much, though. I'm trying to do that more, especially with Instagram, because you can do stories. And I haven't really got into it because I'm not comfortable with showing everything that I do. I, I really like to edit what goes out from me. Uh, but as far as, you know, advertising my YouTube channel or something like that, that's, that's kind of handy. And I get a lot of feedback from people viewing my artwork online through Instagram and I so I have done a, a few little ones but I really want to get into that more boy it is storming outside right now uh, sunnies can be here oh my my new toy showed up today which new toy I got a new drill press a drill press all right Yes, it's an 8-inch drill press, but... That's better than nothing. 
I'm trying to set my drill press in a in a better spot. I have not found a good spot for it. I I keep my drill press and my bandsaw close to each other, but there's just never enough room to put everything where I want it. Just need a larger garage. I do. I'm trying to be a minimal minimalist in life, but I just keep going big. There's an app for that. Well, they say they say go big or go home, but in your case, you're already home. And I'm kind of big too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll recommend this app my son loves it it's a it's a game i mean it's an app on the phone but you play it with people while you're together that's spy fall oh yeah he's uh he's wanted me to play that yeah that's that's a pretty fun game i'm trying to go through and look at some more apps i've we're recording this uh podcast on an app and my fitness app, Runtastic, I use that when I when I am exercising. And I have been exercising lately, but not as much as I need to because I'm still fat. Speaking of that, when I was trying to lose weight, I was using my fitness app, and it did help because I was easy. It was a lot easier for me to keep track of what I needed to because there was a database connected to it. Yeah, it's, it's motivational. Quick quick calories they had good articles to read i need to lose weight again <laughs> you and me both brother i look like i ate <clears throat> myself i'm twice the size i used to be <laughs> that's what happens when you drink beers as big as your head <laughs> but it twitches your thirst <laughs> <laughs> not really but it does other things for us. Okay, so uh, ha have we uh, determined whether apps waste your time or help you? No, I, we have not. <laughs> I think it's one of those things that will not be answered. It's all subjective. It's how you use them and how efficient you want to be. If you want to be efficient, you can use apps to make your life efficient and find what works. If you want to waste time, there's plenty of apps for that. There's yeah, something there's for everybody. Actually, there's one app that will waste more time than any of the others. It's called Facebook, right? Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to start wrapping it up. Oh, and I did have a question of the week. Are What's you, that? Why are car power window motors always bolted in backwards because when the door's built it's easier for the machine is that it I think so I know someone I work with someone that used to be in the automotive industry and I will talk to him about that well, I would be curious to know that because my other daughter came over the other day and her power window was is just completely kaput and she couldn't get it up. And I took the panel off and, you know, did the whole beating on it with a hammer while trying to roll it up. And so eventually what I did was what I always have to do is take the motor out and raise the window up. And I use zip ties to hold hers up. I just zip tied around the cross member. Yeah to hold it up so that she wasn't driving around in the rain with her window down. But, you know, I was thinking every power window I've ever taken out, the bolts have been in backwards. And, you know, I, I thought, well, maybe it's because if you have bolts pointing in, maybe it'll scratch the glass, but they, they design everything very, so efficient nowadays. Why can't they do it for an easy replacement? No, 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 no. They don't design for easy replacement and easier to work on. Right. They design it for efficiency of build. Right. Which is my complaint. It should be built to be efficiently repaired. 
Well, see, I work, I do repairs for a living. And it's the same thing with machinery and factories that it is with cars. I have, I have, I have a big gripe about this. They do not design machineries for it to be worked on. They design it to be, to, to run. Right. So, like, I was changing out a servo and a wrapper the other day, and I literally had to lay on a bar that was two inches wide and crawl into this machine to take out four bolts and undo a, a set screw that I couldn't even see. Did you fix that while you were there? <laughs> Did you re-engineer no, it? There is no way to re-engineer that piece of machinery because of where it sits. The machine itself was designed to, when you look at it, it's a covered box. So when you open it up, you can access the stuff. They have access panels. But these access panels, sometimes you have to take hours to pull stuff out to get to one part. Right. This is probably a, a conversation for another whole podcast because we could probably go okay. on and on about this because I got something else and we're already over an hour. You know what I say? That's our next podcast. Be prepared, people. Be prepared. <laughs> All right, we'll 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 do that. Uh, we'll, we'll call it engineering versus re-engineering or something. I like it. I so get, what episodes is this? Huh? What episodes is this? Number nine. We're, we're Number almost at... Nine. Say it again. Number nine. I like the way you say it. Number nine. <laughs> Almost 10 episodes. Wow. Pretty good for a podcast that's good enough for who it's for. It's good enough for who it's for. I guess we ought to wrap it up. I'm Drew Roberts. I'm Jeremy. You can find me at Junk Pilomatic on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and almost any other social media that I'm a part of. That he uses apps for. That I use apps for <laughs> that waste my time and help me. <laughs> and and we'll, episode nine of making fun. Peace out, people. Later. <laughs>